You are listening to the Built to Grow podcast, delivering the knowledge in all things fitness business. We help gym owners win. Here are your hosts, Tim Lyons and Randy Angston. All right, welcome back to the Built to Grow podcast. I'm your host, Tim Lyons, and joined in studio as always. Randy, the patriarch of productivity, Angston. <laughs> Boom. Good day, sir. Good day. Also, a special guest, Amanda Goolsby, joining us, talking uh, about some some cool pre-sale stuff. She came from Orange Theory, and you, actually, I'm going to let her explain some of these numbers because they blow like blow my mind. And we're, we'll get into that here in a second. A couple other things, guys, before we get started: the Fit Pro Growth Summit is sold out. So. It is. I know I've been getting a lot of DMs and uh, emails about it. We probably will run another one, but as of right now, this one's sold out. Scott's still sold out. If people cancel or fall out, I'll, I'll shoot an email out. But, uh, you know, sorry, can't get in. So, anyways, <laughs> we're, exci- <laughs> we're excited about that event, and, uh, and we're happy to have Amanda here. She is um, here local, local Scottsdale resident, yeah. so welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. She didn't know what she was getting into today. Yeah, yeah. I didn't. <laughs> so I know these uh, episodes kind of release on Tuesdays and Thursdays, but today is, in fact, Wednesday, which what does that mean, Randy? That means the whiskey's involved. Uh, whiskey Wednesday. Mm-hmm. Whiskey Wednesdays are the best. So I emailed Amanda before the show. I was like, hey, um, <laughs> unfortunately, yeah. but fortunately, it's Whiskey Wednesday, it and we've got some great whiskeys on, on tap today. We've got Chestnut Farms. Mm. It's a nice Kentucky bourbon blend, and then we have our, our, our old faithful 1792 which, guys, if you haven't tried that, if you're whiskey guys and girls, jump on yeah, that. Delicious little blends. What do you think about it? You know, I don't often choose whiskey, if ever. It's probably been a good decade since I've had whiskey <laughs> on the rocks. Cheers. Probably since I was 21. <laughs> Cheers. So. Well, welcome. Oh, we, we will drink to that. <laughs> <laughs> but it's actually not as bad it's as I as thought bad it would as you be. Thought. Yeah, we watered it down for you. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, obviously, you can see how this one's going to go. Yeah, so Amanda, I, I, I'm, I was excited. Eric emailed me, right, introduced us over email, and I know that you live in town. So um, he, he basically gave me a little background. Well, I want, f- for the listeners, I want you to tell your story real quick. Don't take too long, okay? <laughs> but go into your story a little bit, and then, like, the tell, tell us, um, you know, you started when you were 15 years old, and, te- and now we are, we're not going to tell your age, but here we are today. Tell me that story really quick. Okay, real quick. So Time's up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go ahead. So I started um, in the fitness industry yep. as my very first job, small town, su- southwest Washington, and I was selling gym memberships, hustling gym memberships, yeah. and then doing client orientations on the equipment when people would come in. Cool. Um, so through high school, I realized, you know what? Like, I have a passion for this. I want to take it to the next level. So I got my personal training cert, okay. started doing PT, Certified. opened my first business, uh, my first LLC, the week I turned 18 and started personal training Super out of that cool. gym. Very cool. So I went on to study exercise science at Washington State and um, did personal, yeah, the figures. <laughs> and you know did personal training taught group fitness and helped run the the snap fitness franchise that was there in pullman okay. when i was there and it wasn't until after college and uh m- moving down here actually i made a transition in late 2011 moved from portland to phoenix and mm-hmm. about four months after i got here i was like you know what like it's been four months since i had been out of fitness and it just felt like i was missing this yeah, big passion. portion of my life yeah. And I got on Craigslist, looked for fitness studios that were hiring, and this unknown brand I had never heard of called Orange Theory Fitness popped up. So I submitted my resume and a headshot just for good measure. (laughs) Good job. Just for good measure. Good job. And got a call back and interviewed the next day. So started with a company when there were about around 10 locations open around the country wow. okay. and two locations here in Arizona. So was Arizona like outside of Florida yep. where they started? Was Arizona one of the first locations? Yeah, like, yeah one wow. of the first four states to open. Just, just so happened this, to be. Yeah, this North Scottsdale location yeah. was actually uh, license number three. I don't know if they were actually third to open, but it was Studio 000, or still is, Studio 0003. Uh, Mayo. Mayo, yeah. Interesting. We lost some clients to them early on. Oh, yeah. That's no, all good. That's no, all good. They all came back. <laughs> <laughs> so <clears throat> that was the start of the journey with Orange Theory. And that was when I really made the transition from being in the fitness side of the fitness business mm-hmm. to the business side of the fitness business. Yeah. And uh, began being mentored by the, the era rep that owned the rights to all of, mm-hmm. all of Arizona. And so moved into a regional position here. And between like 2012 and 2014, 
uh, was responsible for supporting franchisees, supporting new studio launches, okay. and we opened up to about 14 locations over the course of just over two years in Arizona, in Arizona. alone. Okay, cool. Arizona alone. So 2014, I began to kind of Ex explore out to other parts of the country. People were starting to develop, so I helped launch studios in South Carolina, did a turnaround in Kansas, yep. and then moved on to, to Salt Lake City. So the, the growth of the brand continued to expand, yeah. and the best part is having been a part of it from the, the early days, it yeah. gave me the opportunity that by a few years in, I just had this wealth of knowledge that I am so grateful to have sure. been in at the early part because as you see a brand grow and evolve from day one where we're writing our own workouts and yeah. every single day to the point where technology is now being Perfect. introduced yeah. uh, to the point where no one knows how to use the M mind body online. Yeah. I'm like self teaching, you yeah. know, reports to the point where I could in four, 40 hours train a, a franchise owner and their sales staff how to fully yeah. operate a business and on on day five, I'm just sitting back and like watching them, observing them That's operate. So, cool. yeah. so getting the opportunity to, to travel around the country and, and do that was quite quite a fun period of time. But I transitioned, uh, found there's a couple guys out of Atlanta that were had opened a couple of studios, partnered up with them, flew mm -hmm. out to Atlanta and said, okay, Oregon's the next, uh, the next place to go. So they had one studio there, but no one overseeing the rights. So we moved into the area rep position there in Oregon. And in 2016, we um, launched a pre-sale there for our first studio in the Oregon market right. that opened with uh, just a right around 600 members by wow. the end of our first 30 days. That's so amazing. we were doing, um, with the price point that we were at, we did, uh, you know, we had a million dollars in reoccurring revenue. Before you opened. Before we opened. Man. So the, hit, hit the button, we call Hold it, on. you know. <laughs> did, you, did you guys understand what she just said? Pre-sale, not even open yet. Day one, they're doing over $80,000 in reoccurring revenue. It's yeah. a million dollar business before they even had one expense. I mean, reoccurring expenses. So that's awesome. Okay, cool. And, you know, it's a, it's a process. That's the, oh, yeah. the key is that, like, everyone wants that level of success, but not everybody is willing to do the work to that do it, it takes, takes to achieve that level of success. I could agree to that, yep. And, you know, as Oregon, yeah, we launched that su studio successfully. We had franchisees opening. And so in total, went from having like one location in Oregon to 10, 10 locations in the course of a year. Under, under your yeah, guidance? Yeah, under like our guidance. Th you were part owner of all yeah, those? Yeah, so I was, a part, I was the managing partner. So I'd help a franchisee launch, mm -hmm. train their staff, and then oversee our staff in our studios that were located there. So, you know, our growth continued and we bought other studios mm -hmm. that were yeah. either under operating or sure. uh, or in new markets where we were able to buy licenses and then um, had the opportunity to take over the the southern UK so I moved to London for a period of time mm -hmm. and you know there was three studios there that it was interesting a big box like the, the largest fitness company in the in in London and just in Europe is like David Lloyd Leisure they okay. run like yeah, big box leisure clubs yeah. uh, and they bought Orange Theory back in the day but it wasn't their priority like small boutique studios was was never their thing yep. so they just never made it a priority so finally we we had the chance to come in yeah. and help with the turnaround and now you know they've opened more studios and the brand's starting to take more of a foothold but it's interesting because it was you know in another english-speaking country you'd think the early days it would have developed fast like the u.s was but there was just not someone leading the there's charge there's always a lag like we, we work with a lot of australian clients and it always seems like they're about five years behind yeah. trends mm -hmm. and so that's probably the same <clears throat> over there yeah wow okay so now you, you've got these studios in Oregon you got the thing in UK going on yeah Atlanta Chattanooga South Carolina so all together we had 15 studios in the US and three studios in in London and that was over a period of about 18 months we went from those two locations to 18 locations in 18 months so almost one a month yeah boom, boom, boom. yeah I mean we opened 10 acquired six sure. and then had two that were open but it was it was rapid growth and it yeah. taught you know the lessons in growing a business are one thing the lessons in scaling at the level of employees and mm -hmm. team and culture and how you how you scale a culture across multiple states and multiple time zones yes uh, yeah. <laughs> and different demographics yeah. and things like that I mean yeah. I'm from the Midwest what appeals to the Midwest is not what appeals to us here in totally. Arizona. Like that is a different person for the most part. Yeah. You know? so, so even so. the culture within the studios and the team that was hired, mm -hmm. but ultimately 
that that level of growth gave me the understanding of okay like if if a brand or if an organization is wanting to scale there's very specific components Mm -hmm. of growth that need to be in place to be able to scale at that level absolutely i could speak for many of the gym owners we hate it when an orange theory opens in our market we just hate it i mean it's just competition and that's just so well known. Now you're competing against this national brand and you've right. got, they've got this game plan that you're gonna speak to us about that you know, opens the doors with 600 members, probably 100 of them are your members going over there. Uh, and so that's, that's tough. So, so Orange Theory's got this ex- extreme growth uh, and then now we're not with Orange Theory anymore. Yeah, right? so okay. I I exited in the summer of 2017, okay, and a couple years ago, you know, yeah. just had the desire to branch out to mm-hmm. be able to impact and speak on stages and do the things that yeah. I was really passionate about, both from a business consulting and coaching perspective. And um, yeah, I've been able to to get the opportunity to, to do that. Yes, and looking forward to beautiful. You know, some of the brands that I now get to work with, it's like okay, it doesn't have to be so hard. Like you're at 100 mm-hmm. units, but the growth from 100 to 500 and then to 1,000, there's there's a learning curve that can be skipped, you know? So Got that's it. a big thing that I'm passionate about now is like, hey, don't make all the mistakes that I made and, and that we made in scaling, yeah. and here's here's the playbook to kind of skip some Perfect. of those learning curves. As you hire, <laughs> you hire shortcuts. Yeah, sure. we, we talk about it all the time. We buy time. Buy right? time. Yeah. So mm-hmm. anything that we can shortcut the process on, we're gonna buy time, and that's so that's what you do now. That's awesome. Okay, so now I've gotta dig a little deeper. I gotta find out what's going on with these pre-sales. Because we work with some, actually, currently, we're working with two pre-sale clients right now. Uh, I know that when we talked before, it was like a little bit longer time frame. I mean, both of these gyms are opening within 30 days. Yeah. Um, let's, take, let's take people through kind of like the step-by-step. <laughs> Obviously, they've got their location. They've got their name. Their brand, everything, construction's kind of getting in, in the permit stage. Like, what's the marketing game plan? Mm-hmm. Um, would you tell somebody that, that is doing a grand opening right now? Yeah. So, oh, we lost we're it. Down one. Yeah, let's see if we can. Um, we're just gonna we'll segment this. Let's see if we can plug it in and run with it. We have another battery, don't we? Mm, for those, I'm not sure. Sorry, guys, no. we're back. We lost power, but we're back. <laughs> so, what I would say is ultimately, if you go back just a little bit in their process, one thing that's really important is that they understand who they're marketing to. Mm. And what I mean by that is, I believe that a lot of facilities and gym owners, they they have this uh, idea that they're for everyone. Well, like, I can help anyone. I can serve anyone. Like, I can change everyone's life. And that's probably true. But when it comes to a shortened period of time where you have the chance to market to an ideal client who ultimately is gonna be the person that's gonna say yes yes more often than not. I think it's really important to understand, yeah, who is our target demographic? Mm -hmm. And we obviously know our like geographic, which is ideally depending on what size city you're in, you know, one, three, five miles within your radius. Mm -hmm. But I think it's also important to, to be thinking about before you go into actually executing on marketing is who's my ideal client and then where do they live? Where do they work? Where do they shop? Where do they eat? Where do they spend time in your local community? Okay. Because yes, uh, a piece of your pre-opening marketing it, that's really important is your online game presence, plan, your yeah, online presence. presence. Whether you're spending, you know, I, I definitely suggest spending money on ads and I definitely suggest not trying to bootstrap it yourself during a pre-opening. It's like invest in a company who knows what they're doing, yeah. who has proven success in marketing so that your your ad spend is actually getting you what you want and you're just not you're not testing out the waters in pre-sales right. because ultimately it's your only opportunity that your gym or your facility will ever be open where marketing and sales is your sole focus. Yeah, you, you, know? did, you did mention that. Like, what mm-hmm. else you got going on? I mean, yeah, you got the, the construction going on. Yep. You got some busy work going on. But, like, you're not running clients through your gym. It's the only time you're not running clients. Let's let's get some, uh, let's get some marketing sales. Okay, right. so define your market. Obviously, where they hang out, eat, shop, where they live. Okay, we, we, we've decided we know that what that is. Okay, yep. then what's next? Next step is be committed to creating omnipresence in your community. Okay. What I mean by that is you need to become known within that 10 to 12 to 14 week period. Like ideally from my experience, I'd say the ideal length of time is about 12 weeks. 12 weeks, okay, 12 weeks of marketing. Marketing, marketing. prior to doors opening. Yeah, and, and mind you, what I mean by that is 
have a presence outside of your facility every single day. So it's like doors open. It's like we're open for business the day that pre-sales starts. So whether that's 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday through Friday and 10 to noon on Saturday, or it's you know nine to six, whatever it is, commit to the hours that you are gonna be present at your facility set up in a way that as one, leads are coming into you, you can yep. be working those leads yep. and ideally, you don't you don't want to be selling on the phone like you can if someone really knows who you are and you're like ready to like they're they're excited to buy take a credit card over the phone but the majority of the time clients don't know who you are they don't know what you do right and yes there's a discount or you have some sort of an offer you know your founding member rate yeah, or we'll talk about that or yeah. your um free weeks whatever the offer is that you're going to be giving them and and that they're going to be seeing in your marketing but what i found is that people try to bypass the actual like sales process. And what I mean by that is just try to be closing people on the phone and then they wonder why they're not selling as much. And that's because they're selling on price. They're just trying to sell on their discount versus treating them just like they would a client if they were to come into their facility. Right. So if so a client comes into your facility, you have a sales process yeah. in place, right? Step one, they do this. Mm -hmm. Step two, they do an intake form. You mm -hmm. get to know discovery, needs analysis, yes. find out about them so that when you come to the end of their free session, you get to make or your salesperson makes a offer and a recommendation based on what their goals are and what they're wanting sure. to achieve. It's the same thing in sales, in, in pre-sales. The only difference is that rather than going through a free session or a free workout, you show them what it would be like to go through that free workout. Yes. Okay. So what you see is people just trying to s just sell on the phone. Like they're trying to sell price. Hey, we've got this great deal coming up. Hey, you're going to get our best rate ever sign now. Yeah. But obviously there's, they're still a person. Mm -hmm. They still have needs. They want a specific result. They're not getting, you can't sell value, value on, over a number on price over the, especially over the phone. So you want them to come in. Yep walk the gym walk the space hey over here we're gonna have our treadmills over here's rowers you guys can't wait you know and obviously you want to be excited the whole time and i was actually just uh in our team meeting yesterday we we're just going over our 10-year anniversary here at pulse in our team meeting and we i told the team because it's not the same team that we opened with of course. Um, the story and we were selling people in the gym full of dirt there was pipes on the ground there was dirt there was concrete there's no equipment no paint no walls and we were so young first like oh my god I'm a color, no gray hair <laughs> I, I was like there was we no were, there we was were no so hair. so excited i was showing people a diagram of where everything was going to be <clears throat> yep and we were signing people up every right. day and it was amazing the thing it, and this is something it's a common thread in the conversation we've been having lately and this is something that i think stands the test of time is you're not advertising you're marketing you're you're providing the solution to a client's problem and you're talking about the change that they're going to have mm -hmm. the experience that they can or what they can experience yeah, or the, what they will experience yeah, it's, the it's all of it's, yeah it's 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 the client experience it's more than just cool you're going to get an hour session for 89 bucks right. like that there's nothing to be said about that right. and if if that's the stance that the facility is making then they're only going to be focused on advertising and, and turn and burn and you know you're, you're literally positioning as many people in front of you as possible cold nothing but that's not the community that we're part mm -hmm. of that's not the conversation that a good marketing you know a business can rely on over the longevity yeah. and uh you bring up a good point it's like you you need i tell i tell my clients that are going through the pre-sales is like you need to decide before you start selling memberships what is the culture yes. that you're going to create in your studio mm -hmm. for your members because you, that transfer of enthusiasm like that's what sales is yes. mm -hmm. it's a transfer of enthusiasm how enthusiastic okay. can you be about the product or service that you're offering and when a client is you're selling air in pre-sales yep. like that was always our ongoing yeah. Yeah. we're selling air yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so <laughs> you like this air but you know and you might depending on your construction you might not get the chance to walk them through the facility but having some sort of a mock-up like we would always yeah. have a mock-up design of what's the studio going to look like and I could walk someone through and say and then the trainer is going to be doing this throughout the session and you know give them an overview yeah. of what it would be like to be a member in that facility I know you said that you haven't exercised for a long time and that you have this fear of being in mm -hmm. like large groups here's how our, our trainers are going to be doing hands-on corrections throughout your session cool. so like giving them an overview of that in the pre-sale process in the in the presentation so that 
they understand what it would be like to be a member and they can start to feel and see themselves in your facility, which is really what you need in pre-sales in order for someone to be like, okay, well, here's my credit card. I love know? the beauty of how much that translates to the long time, like the sales of the clients that we're on the phone with. <laughs> yeah. It's the same yeah. place that clients sh or like, you know, gym owners should be putting a lot of their focus in their conversation is the needs of the individual that's walking in and not the dollar amount that they're trying to sell them on. Yeah. And the, you know, we've been talking about this, the, the, the position that fitness marketing is right now is so much have, um, weighted towards slapping people in the face based on value as a number as opposed to the solution to a client's problems. Yeah, the so, transformation. Mm -hmm. Exactly, right? We're selling the, ex the, the feeling and what you're going to receive at the end of your transformation and, and the process along the, the, the way. And all of that is really what we need to be speaking to, telling the story. Not just people don't care about your treadmills. Hey, that's my point. They don't care like, about we talked your about this the other the, one of the podcasts <laughs> last two weeks. We did, you know, your the certifications that you have, the the list of abbreviations behind your name, and like that, th those are important. But that's not the selling point of what we're yeah. doing. Mm -hmm. And this, it, I love that the conversation is the same. It doesn't change, and it shouldn't because at the end of the day, what we're trying to get people to to buy into is that transformation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'll even throw this out there. I would tell you that's probably easier to sell on a pre-sale than it is once you're, once ding, you're ding, open. Ding, ding, ding. Yeah, I completely agree. <laughs> it's true. Because I'm thinking about my sale. Yep. I sold 100 people into the gym with dirt. There was, yeah. there was concrete <laughs> floors in, in the construction. There's some some metal studs on the ground and in, in a map like okay. or a diagram of the gym. Right. And to your point, it was all based on enthusiasm. I was so excited to open the doors. I was, this is my business. This, we're going to crush, you yeah. know, and then that, that, the, the people could feel it. Energy yeah. breeds energy. And the, the coolest it, thing, you say it all the time. energy breeds energy. And there's still clients that signed up with me at the grand open that are still here today. Yeah. I mean, that's awesome. We just had the conversation three months, three months in, and years in is when, when we met a decade in. Yep. Three months in. So a decade. In, okay. So w you touched on a couple things. You know, obviously the pre-sale needs to be happening in, in your gym, in person, not on the phone, but the hook. Like the hook is typically what drives a lot of the, the, the sales. You you recommend a founder's rate. Talk about that, and I've got my own take on it, but talk talk about the founder's rate and what, that, what does that mean? So I think it's really dependent. I'll, I'll start by saying this. It's really dependent on what your price point and your model is going to be when you open. Okay. So if you are a studio-based model mm -hmm. where – you're giving a where by giving a 20% discount, you're looking at 20 to 30 dollars off, maybe 40 dollars off a month at max. Okay. However, if you're a training facility where you're offering 350 dollars a month service, offering 20% off is a significant mm -hmm. reoccurring revenue over the lifetime yeah, value of a loss. customer. So I do believe that the offer, the hook needs to be individualized based on what okay. it is that you, your, your open model pricing is going to be. Right. Uh, the founding member rate is, I've seen it be powerful because people love the fact that they're grandfathered in and as long as they're a member, they're always gonna be in at that yep. discounted rate and that's part of the pre-sale pitch is that, hey, by reserving yes. a spot now, you're grandfathered in at this discounted rate. As long as you're a member, you'll have access at that rate. Your right rate will never go up. So that is a benefit of that. You could still do a founder on a higher price point model. Uh, I just wouldn't make it 20, 30% off at the start. I would probably yeah. make it something more like 10% off, you know, yeah. $35 off their monthly reoccurring dues. It's still a value. Sure. And, oh, yeah. you know, they, they have a reason for, hey, they're betting also on us selling them air, you know, yeah. they've never experienced <laughs> sure. it before. And you're giving them the benefit, right? And so, so my thought is with uh, a specific type of model that only has a kind of a cap capacity. Yeah. So like Orange Theory, what's, what, you know, most of them are the same size. Like what's the cap that yeah. you can have in there? I mean, we had the the largest studio in the country at one point and we had 1700 reoccurring okay. members. And so. that was like, that was a big, bigger studio. So it was like can, four, there's over a 4, lot of 000. room to play. Yeah, I would say most, where probably capacity for most locations is probably around the like 11 to 1200. That's running a class basically almost every hour of the day with like three groups running through there the more majority of the day. So okay. like full capacity. Okay, so even with 1100 members, there's plenty of room to play with the founders rate. But with, with different, there's a lot of models coming out and you know, and like there's some that you know 200s max. Mm -hmm. You give somebody a founder's rate, you're kind of you're kind of shooting yourself in the foot, right. like for for life. 
So maybe a short-term founder's rate, hey, first year is this. Yeah, or, or even first the, six months. For six year. months or first three months, yeah. depending on what your pricing model is. And then the, the second layer of that is as a founder, giving them a period of founders weeks or VIP weeks, something that's you know Sweetening specialized the for them to come in and actually utilize the facility. Because yeah. the number one pre-sale objection, and I believe that this will always be is, well, I wanna try it first. Sure, oh, okay. try before you buy. You know, and so like, what if I try it and I don't like it? And so having that in place, having some sort of a period of a week of free sessions, founding member week or founding member weeks before, it's before open to grand the opening, before their credit card runs. So They're, run it almost like a like a soft opening, like a restaurant would or something like that. Yeah, totally. I mean, I, I like to say, hey, you're fully open in those weeks. That's your first week of one creating if you can create an amazing customer experience in those two mm -hmm. weeks, the founding members are gonna stay. Yeah. And they're not gonna say, well, I wanna cancel my membership before it ever runs. Now, yes, you're gonna, no matter what, you're gonna always have drop off, whether it's people canceling because they never come in during the, the free week or weeks. Right. But those, those two weeks are important. I think, you know, from my experience and lessons learned, round two, fill it up. Yeah. <laughs> you know, from my experience and lessons learned of, if you have, let's just call it for the sake of, what, where, where I'm seeing most centers kind of having, let's say have 300 founding members, okay? And those 300 founding members, they need to use the facility during those two 300 weeks. 300 founding members, yeah. You they gotta... need to, you, like you need to be hitting the phone as hard as you can to get people booked and sending out scheduling links. Because if they don't come in and use the facility, the likelihood of them falling off is so Greater. high. Oh, so yeah. you've done the work, you've got them signed, and now you still gotta continue to work to get them to show. Right? And, and nurturing them through that pre-sale process. That's another mistake that I made in the early days. Sign them up and then don't talk forget, to them. Forget for about them. <laughs> don't talk to them for 12 weeks. So having an email nurture campaign that's going out. I've got having, some automation for that. Yeah, yeah. I hear that you're the guy for that. <laughs> yeah. um, having, having a community event or two. If you're a yoga sure, brand, then host yoga in the park once a month leading up to the grand opening Very of your smart. studio. Or if you're a, a training brand, have the head coach that you've hired run a body weight workout in the parking lot of your facility Absolutely. so that everyone's like, what are these people doing? What's going on here? I want to be a part of this. One of the so. best things that we did was when we did uh, like our large group training, we would take everybody outside and run down the block. Yeah. And people were like, what is going on? We got more clients from people like, I saw you guys running. I want to do that. Oh, the previous build that when you guys did the grand opening over there, yeah. so many of those sessions, you know, off the, our summer months here in Arizona, right. were done outside. We had to. You had, uh, yeah, I mean, there were large, I mean, you had 40, 50 people showing up to, you know, every Saturday yeah. for those outdoor boot camps and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And it, again, yeah, it's, it's a, it it's, it's like a pole. It's like a pole in the water, right? Yeah. So many yeah. eyes are seeing this stuff happen yep. that it's like, that's your proof, exactly. Too. Well, that All too, right. absolutely. So th there's an elephant in this room and it's how the hell did you get 800 people to sign up? Like <laughs> we, 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 we know, like, what, we which, know the, which all, elephant in the room? Well, <laughs> what are we talking <laughs> about? Right. Yeah. Well, that's the elephant I'm talking about, but, uh, we, you, we're just kind of like brushing over. Yeah, 800 people signed up, but it's the, we talked, <laughs> okay. about, we yeah. talked about the offer. Yeah, we talked about the weeks in advance. Yep. we talked about being enthusiastic. Yep, we talked about being omnipresent. But that still doesn't mean 800 people are going to sign up. Yeah. So what's what, what, am I, what am I missing here? So I'll first first off, I'll start by saying, I failed at my first pre-sale. Okay. Like, Awatuki, Arizona, 2012. <laughs> <laughs> I was handed that studio and it was like, oh, we got, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we got, we got to open in you three weeks. You got to pour a little out for three weeks. We, we had three weeks and they Ooh, were like, okay. they said, okay, three weeks. And I, you know, I come in, I'm like, I don't know what pre-sale is. I'm, it's middle of summer in Arizona. We did our best. We ended up having a, a pretty large grand opening and we opened with 150. Now in the world of, of your break even being 350, that's a significant loss that you're opening mm -hmm. with member wise, how much money you're losing, how much money we bled for the first six months of being open. So you know, it, it, that, that pre-sale that we did, you know, 600 members and a million dollars in reoccurring revenue, I had personally launched and done about six at that time. And right. I had trained about 20 of them at that time. Got it. So by that, that's one step is like level of expertise and experience of what works, what doesn't, yeah. how do you overcome sure. objections, Absolutely. you know, ability to sell pre-sales. Uh, secondly is that level of dedication, shout out to Jordan Thomas, who was the studio manager running that pre-sale. I mean, her and I would be up at 6 a.m. with like, <laughs> with so you like, pulling up for her? Yeah. <laughs> with, yeah. uh, I mean, we did crazy stuff. Like yeah. we'd have 20 orange bikes 
that were that were duct taped orange oh, and we you did them yourself yeah we duct taped all of these old bikes and we'd put 20 bikes out in the community and then we had to move them like every three days so just having a bike out there would make the sell just type in orange bikes into your phone it was something that started in the early days of orange theory it was a, it was a you know kind of purple cow marketing marketing yeah, idea where cool. if you still to this day type in orange bikes it will, Orange Theory is like the first thing that pops up on Google. Good for you. Smart. Very smart. <laughs> so, you so know. You, you created that. No, no, I didn't create oh, that. I was, I was not the marketing genius. <laughs> <on this. laughs> I no. was giving you a no, shot. No, I'm, I'm pretty sure <laughs> Terry Blachek uh, oh, in Tampa yeah. community, <laughs> created that. But oh. we utilize that as a as a marketing tactic okay. in the local market. Now, do I recommend you painting red bikes because you have red? No. But what I'll say is it was 16 weeks of hustle. There you go. Sure. 16 okay. weeks. We were there every single day. We didn't miss a day. We didn't shut down because, you know, it snowed outside. Like we were there making calls every single day. We were there doing outreach in the community, talking mm -hmm. to businesses. We were there handing out flyers at the grocery store, reusable grocery bags with a big splat on it, handing it out to 50 or 100 people. So yes, we had leads coming in from social media and, you know, we had an, had amazing results from the campaigns that we're running. And I, I'd say at a minimum, depending on the pre-sale but like at a minimum we're probably spending three to five thousand dollars a month on ad spend during the pre-sale yeah, okay. phase but the, the thing that I think people go is like whoa that's a lot of money like 5k a month fifteen thousand dollars just in our ad spend but the thing about it is is you hit your button with thirty thousand dollars in your first week even like you doubled your ad spend yeah. just by the investment that you put in that's the not key. counting the fact that when you have 300 people talking about your brand in an area, it's Every, like yeah. wildfire. Yeah. So the growth, your growth trajectory goes significantly up. I mean, that studio specifically in Portland, Portland went from 600 to 1,062, 1,048 members in a month, in a year. Okay. So that year doubled, almost doubled in membership. So you, it took you 16 weeks to get 600. It took you a year to get double that. Yeah. Think about that. Yeah. But it's not, that's not a bad thing. Yeah. I'm just telling you guys, if you're doing a, like a grand open, this is your shot. This is, totally. yeah. You you, this is your opportunity to make that. You can't sit back. Now I know a lot of gym owners are, this might be your first gym. So this is the episode to kind of rewind and listen to, cause we're giving you this, I mean, Amanda's breaking it down. Like she's not saying, Hey, um, running Facebook ad for one lead for a free week and good luck. No, it's on the ground, orange bikes. It's, it's grocery stores. It's, being out in the community, it's getting people to show up, you know, being out there every single day. Mm -hmm. If you want the, and it goes back to what you were saying earlier, if you want the result that you achieved, do the work that you guys did. Yeah. Unfortunately, few do. Yeah. And I don't know that they wouldn't do the work. I don't think they're aware. Yeah. Well, and I agree. And I don't think there's, uh, not, I'm not saying there that they're just, unwilling to do it. If it's there was just, just a playbook. For grand openings, <laughs> do we have? Do we know where we can get one of those? You know, I, uh, I bet we could find out. <laughs> uh, well, here's the thing. <laughs> so I've had so many people say to me, like in the wellness space and in the fitness space, uh, "Hey, I, I want my business to open in the. I want to open in the black." Like I want to have, I want to be at break even or higher the month that the business opens, and you know, as I've gone through this journey, I realized, hey, not only do people need to understand the playbook, which is one thing, and I decided, okay, well, I'm working with people, I'm supporting people, but ultimately, I want to be able to reach, I want to be able to reach Australia at the same time that I'm reaching the UK and reaching uh -huh. the US. And so about, about 90 days ago, I really started taking all these years of experience and expertise and drawing out a curriculum. Yep. And I call it pre-sell the profit, which yes. is five phases or five steps that you need to go through to have a successful pre-sale starting with purpose which is all about the mindset work yeah. and the why behind it sure. moving into the planning phase which really digs into that hey what's your target market what's your offer how many staff members are you going to have you know what is the um what's your schedule going to be like because you need to start hiring for that if you're going to have two sales associates well start putting out start doing your outreach for hiring so mm -hmm. all in the planning phase and then i move into like a four-week phase of preparation which is 
buying all your supplies, getting your signage up on your building, doing all of the steps that it yeah. takes to actually be ready to yeah. launch your business at the day your pre-sales goes live, which yeah. ideally would align with when your construction starts. And then I, I support them in moving through the production phase, which is obviously the important 10, you know, 8, 10, 12, 14 weeks of selling, marketing and selling, marketing and selling, yeah. marketing and selling. And then moving into that like profitability transition, which is how do you transition into your free weeks? How do you set up your team and your culture for a powerful first 30 days of opening? Perfect. So that because it's having done that so many times, mm -hmm. I know like where people get lost. The crucial Because it's a aspects, law. Sure. Even, you think organization, like the organization of pre-sales matters. Mm -hmm. Because think about members cancel or something, you charge their credit card and then they're pissed and yeah. then they're leaving reviews. I got to experience all of that. So I'm like, <laughs> here is the Excel document. Yeah. track everything on this master Perfect. spreadsheet you know so you've got all that put together and we can get that at pfmarketingsolutions.com <laughs> no seriously pfmarketingsolutions.com slash pre-sale and that's going to go right to your course isn't it it's great yeah isn't it Done. yeah pre-sale pre the profit and the, the course the course is one thing it'll be live uh in probably three to four weeks at the most i've just been recording all of the video content Good. and yeah. online content for that so smart and then also i'll have an accelerator where if people want to receive my support through the process for six months i'll have bi-weekly coaching calls that will go along That's with the course so that thing. you know you can hop on and ask me what's the objection that you're getting and i can coach you through overcoming that objection in pre-sales that's so so solid i mean for gym owners that well i mean think about it. You, you may have opened one but you're opening another one yeah. you want to do it better yeah buy this course if you're not new to gym ownership buy this course here's the kicker you get one shot at a pre-sale yeah but think about all the listeners right now they've already been open mm. like do they even tune out right now no. what can we do for these folks that that maybe we can leverage mm -hmm. A, a re grand opening, a real like the the energy of a pre sale into a ten year old business, five year old business, twenty year old business. How do yeah. we do it? So I would say the first step is think about pre sales from the standpoint of how committed you are during that time to marketing and selling. Mm -hmm. Okay, so your focus is marketing and selling. In an open center, you've been operating for whatever yeah. period of length of time. You need to recommit to a, a length of time okay. where you're gonna have an extended focus and team and resources for marketing and selling. Okay. So it's like, if you have been open for, you know, I was talking to someone in the Midwest that's in the Secret Trainer Society, and he, you know, shout out to <laughs> <laughs> And he, uh, uh, he said to me, you know, hey, I wanna re-grand re open, I wanna relaunch. Yeah. And I said, well, first off, here's a budget, here's, oops, sorry, here's a budget yeah. template, right? It's like plan, for how much money you're prepared to invest for a, sh a period of time, it could be eight weeks. Sure. But if for eight weeks you extended an, an extra salesperson to be taking sales tours and sales yep, process, yep. you spent an, a, an additional amount of money on your you know, re-grand opening marketing budget, yep. and you made a commitment to being the most known business in your community for eight weeks. Okay, so it comes down to focus. Wow. It comes down to focus, just like, just focus on this. Day totally. to day, that needs to just happen in the background. We're all in on this thing. All in. And so that's how you can. Okay, uh, some gyms change their name. Yeah, I was gonna say that was my next question. Well, we have three clients that I know of that have done this. Um, Frank Nash mm -hmm. Str from, went from Frank Nash Training Center, uh, whatever Frank Nash so Training to, um, to Stronger. Stronger. Mm -hmm. Rick Mayo went from North Point to Alloy, Alloy. and now our buddy Jared. Um, Hobbs it went from Bernier to Jim. J I M. You can even throw in Chuck in, in the mix. Chuck went from Cross CrossFit Hills to Bros to Hillsboro Fitness. So Pacific. Pacific? He, Hillsboro Fitness. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So he went from a CrossFit and got rid of that. Uh, if you're gonna do that, now I know. But it's a common thread because the conversation happens all the time. I, like I, the idea of it. I don't. I mean, if it made sense, I'd change the name. Sure. Here. Because then it's a new. It's like energy. Because the our not our clients but people in the area they're like oh my god a new, new gym a new a <laughs> yeah. new gym meanwhile it's still going into my bank account and it doesn't <laughs> matter to me I mean granted we've got SEO and everything ranked our website that, that kind of you lose out on that yeah. side of it but I mean there's some of the shit makes sense yeah. like th change the colors paint the gym s change the sign same company re grand opening yeah re grand opening. 
six hundred sales. Throw, throw, throw a sign up that says under under same ownership <laughs> and just like <laughs> new paint scheme. Like what you is, don't even need to say that. You just say just, grand. Yeah, just, just say grand opening. Grand opening. People are like, oh, that place Pulse Fitness went out of business. I'm like, yeah, it sure <laughs> did. But we got this. We keep, got the, keep the name. Just throw the sign up. We know the signs pay off. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> still Pulse. Spot, Fitness. Yeah, ten years in, grand opening. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you got to leverage that. You yeah. got to leverage energy. Yeah. And. and I don't know how other areas are. I know how Phoenix is, and you you know you, you live here. When something new opens, yeah, brand loyalty doesn't exist in Arizona. I mean, my clients, God bless, they do. <laughs> but I'm telling you, uh, a new lifetime opens. Yeah, the Gold's Gym went out of business. Yeah, you know, it's like everybody goes over to the new. The place. newest thing. The new yeah. Orange Theory. Yeah. When you guys the came out, thing. everybody went over there. It's like guys. You don't even know if you like it yet, but it's they want to be cool or whatever. You want to be the first. I, I get it. Uh, so yeah, maybe tr- try that on your market. Throw a new, put, change your name. Yeah. Right. Do, would you recommend? Yeah, that? I mean, I I love Frank's f- what Frank has done and like rebranding his facility and just you know s- seeing that change enough that it's like okay, it's enough of a difference, mm-hmm. but the product is staying the same. The it's, same. You know, yeah, yeah. you have the same product. You're still getting people results. It's not like we're asking you to. I think a lot of gym owners get too a- attached to their gym as their identity. I think so too. Interesting. And Interesting. so it's like the thought of even changing the name. I bet that makes people uncomfortable that okay. are listening to this. They're sure. like, well, I can't change my name. This is who I am. This is my gym. I came up with the Do name. Do you like money? I don't <laughs> yeah, know. Exactly. <laughs> well, exactly. And ultimately, like, I love the fact that the, the service isn't changing. The mission isn't changing. The conversation we're having is not about the delivery system. It's about the business. Mm-hmm. And a lot of the gym owners, and back to the podcast that we've been talking about lately, is where to keep your focus to grow your business. Your tra- pe- what did you say before we got on? Like people, don't clients are, but people, people aren't come signing up because of your treadmills. treadmills. Like yeah. They don't care, right? It's, it's the client experience, and it's encompassing. It's the environment. It's the community. It's, the, it's so much bigger than just the result that they're going to receive. Mm-hmm. That all plays into it. You know? it, it you, your rebrand is not about the equipment. Right, you you made a transition with equipment. You got rid of ninety percent of it at one point, mm. but yeah. that didn't uh, yep. it didn't reinvent, you know, this influx of people running through no your doors because we lost that people. Cha- yeah, we right? lost a lot of. People. But at the end of the day, the the conversation that changed was why people decided to walk into the gym and not back does, out. Does that Amanda oh. need a refill? Oh man, is she slacking over yeah. here? I mean, I, guess <laughs> I don't know. Like ten years <laughs> in, can you, are, are, okay, that's all. Uh, water. Uh, okay. uh, <laughs> no, like, look, at, look at the color of your whiskey. I it's, mean, it was basically the ice cubes. I was hoping that you wouldn't see, but I'm you all saw. over it. You were calling me. We won't hurt that. you. We won't hurt you. Round we'll... two. Uh, see how this goes. I know whiskey Wednesday. <laughs> see you. Ha- see, and she had to tease Rick too about the whiskey Wednesday. Did he? Did he text you back? I don't know. My phone's out uh, there. <laughs> shout Rick. out. Yeah. Sh- shout out. Shout, shout out, Rick. Out, Rick. Yeah. Okay. So we got 600 members. Okay. One question I think that's probably brewing in the minds of the listeners, mm-hmm. like. Well, hey, you know, Orange Theory you got 600 members because it's Orange Theory. Like, I am Joe's gym. Yep. Like, how do I? Like, that's the reason you got 600. Yeah. Is that true? I believe it's the number one limiting belief of why people aren't successful at pre-sales. Is that you? If you believe that the reason you're not selling is because of your brand or you because of whatever, then you're not going to be successful. It's like you have to believe that this process will work. I like her. She talks all the things that make sense. It's to like me. you have to believe cuz like yes, of course the brand at the, yes, 2016 that studio opened, but I'll tell you what, like there were studios open when we did, you know, we were first to market like in Utah mm-hmm. and that was no brand awareness. That studio still Good opened point. with sure. like 375. Are now. they still there? Yeah, they're in Utah. Yeah. No, the one in Oregon. Oh yeah, Oregon's crushing well, it. It's well, grown, to be honest but with you, is Orange Series still not closed one location? Still yet? not closed a single location single? across the world. Yeah. That's pretty unique, right? That does, yeah, that's not it normal. doesn't. It doesn't happen. It just doesn't happen. Like, a thousand. Yeah. Yeah. Rick mentioned that in his episode, so I was like, oh, dude, that's all pretty dang that's, cool. That's, yeah, that's that's crazy in the in the in this industry, and as finicky as fitness yeah. can be. I want to bring up a stat. I heard, you, maybe you know the answer. D- is it true that the average Orange Theory client lasts three months? No, I would say from my understanding, at least from when I left, you know, when I exited Orange Theory is like the, at that point, the average length of stay, I believe was seven months. Okay. But you still got to turn and burn that. 
that that person's gone seven months. Yeah. So we did our our numbers here, and yep. I kind of showed you don't really probably know a lot about our model, but we have a group training level, and okay. we got personal training level, and, and the price point is like one ninety nine and under for this group training level, and then three nine three fifty and over for this month this side. Uh, for our team training, it's nine point eight months. For our high level, it's thirty six months. Wow, that's a big difference. It's amazing. But you, Orange Theory, would live in this hundred dollar kind of right. Yeah, right? one fifty, like one thirty average. So, so it's point. in line. Yeah. So, so it's direct in line. correlation to the amount of money that people are investing to their length of stay. And yeah. and, right? and you You're and Rick were more, in alignment. Rick almost was ten months. Yeah. I was nine point eight. He was yeah. ten. I was thirty six. He was thirty eight. So it's like identical mm-hmm. for mm-hmm. the same price mm-hmm. points. Mm-hmm. Uh, which would make sense mm-hmm. so and because we're very similar markets different states yeah and you know you have to think at that lower price point you're also um you you become more accessible to the general population Correct. meaning that people that are making 12 dollars an hour can choose to afford an orange theory fitness membership if they cut out starbucks cut out sure. whatever like they can cho- they can choose to afford a 99 dollar to a 159 dollar a month membership sure, sure. but there's also life things that come up a lot more often for that demographic so it's that can in out. Yeah. So on an average, uh, well, I, I, you know, you're not with Orange Theory anymore. So <laughs> I, should, I shouldn't even ask you anymore. Like that, I just wanted to know about this. Yeah. yeah. So that was just a stat I heard. Length okay. of stay. Yeah. Yeah. So, so guys, it's no different than your facilities where you have clients staying less than a year. They have to turn and burn. So they they went from 600 to a thousand forty eight. Yeah. To almost double, right? And they had to replace people constantly. So it's just part of it. No, and it comes back to just what you want to be known for, who you want to serve, knowing the niche, knowing your avatar client, the lifetime, you mentioned the lifetime value of your client. That is such a crucial aspect of, of knowledge and then how you implement that into the people you're trying to attract. Yeah. We know the 80-20 rule in your business. We mm-hmm. know, you know the, the value ladder and all of that. But ultimately, the data that you've received is what you turn around and you can help other people um, skip, mm-hmm. you know, the struggles, the the, mm-hmm. the figuring it out. And that's why somebody like you has value to a grand opening. Yeah. 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 And, you know, I'll go back to say, you know, the whole belief piece is like, yes, you have to believe in yourself to do a successful presale. And yes, an, an unknown brand. But I think that an unknown brand actually in you know, a mom and pop shop in a market, um, they also have some barriers that they don't have. It's like people, there are people that want to be a part of something that is not the brand that is all over the place. And so I believe that you, in that pre-opening phase, yes, you're going to probably have to work a little bit harder from a brand awareness perspective, but at the same point, you also have the opportunity to utilize that to your advantage of that you aren't just the same, you know, you aren't just the the, the next cycling studio that's doing the same thing, like Mm -hmm. you're different and here's why we're different, here's what we have that makes we're smaller, we have more hands-on, you know, personal training attention, like what is the thing, knowing your unique selling points, I help clients craft what's your 30 second elevator pitch because in pre-sales you need to be able to pique someone's interest when you're in a parking lot quickly and so if you're like oh and we do this and we have this training and it's small group and it's large group and then you might do these dumbbell things and so it's like whoa okay you lost me whoa (laughs) too much too much (laughs) so it's like what is what are the unique selling points if you were to identify like for your gym um here it's like what are the top three unique selling points that makes Pulse different from other training gyms that are mm-hmm. in the area. Are you asking yeah. me? A lot of things. Uh, w- number one, we obviously every every client here has a coach. So we have uh, custom programming. We do the whole gamut from nutrition, stretch therapy, which is recovery, which we, which we preach quite a bit about. And we have our, for our metabolic conditioning all the way through our strength training. So the total package all in one. Yeah. Versus metabolic conditioning only or just strength training strength only training, yeah. or yeah. recovery yeah. only yeah mm-hmm. right so your unique selling point would be that we are an all-in-one package in a w- in a one-hour workout with a personal coach yeah. you have an all-in-one package yeah. that includes metabolic conditioning you know powerful strength yeah. training and recovery perfect thank you yes it, it, it speaks right into the things that we've been talking about lately and the difference between uh, our content to clients play Right. Yep. In a grand or in a pre-sale opportunity, you have the opportunity to deliver to your marketplace nothing but beautiful content. 
they need to know what makes you different than the gym down the street mm-hmm. before you're selling an, a number. And it, it, it this, this again, goes right back to where gyms are now still trying to do that. Everybody is so hung on this number and, like, slapping clients in the mm-hmm. face. But the mission that really is getting people through the door mm-hmm. and getting people to buy into the culture, the belief systems, the the gym and the mission that you're on is the storytelling, is the – we do the same exact thing with our content to clients play. We get on the phone and we break down the pillars of their business. What makes mm-hmm. you unique versus that gym down, mm-hmm. down the street? Let's go vertical in there. Like what, what can we speak to within each of these lanes yeah. that makes sense to the consumer from a perceived value? Not because, again, right, gym owners were way too educated or they're way too educated yeah. in their realm, right? Yeah. Like I always relate it. To, nobody cares about the rotational, you know, force generated. Yeah. From, no, like your client wants to look at naked and yeah. feel better about themselves. Like talk totally. about that. Talk about that. Yeah. Totally. You know, and so, but you can create that brand messaging ahead of asking for the sale because you can't, mm-hmm. you know, because you're, you don't have that opportunity yet. So I love the fact that, like you said, from a business standpoint, shift your focus to marketing and sales before having to facilitate the actual, you know, uh, delivery system mm-hmm. of the result. Yeah, that's what I get out of this. It's just like you, you got to go all in mm-hmm. 16 weeks ish. You know, obviously you got construction, construction and everything yeah. else. Uh, being in the construction industry for years, uh, I know that it never ends on time. I managed this one; it was still a month late. So, what do you want to do? What do you want to do? <laughs> it's never your fault, guys. It's not the GC. It's not that. It's it's the city's the permitting. All of that's going to take time. It well, happens ev- all for the time. us. It's just it was just lazy workers. <laughs> Pretty much it takes time. Like, Either way, hey, you know the the trench is open. Like, why isn't there somebody here? I mean, laying? They, maybe I should have been here. They still <laughs> work pretty hard for me. I'm yeah. just kidding. Oh. <laughs> You're prettier she, than she, me. Yeah, I was going to say, right back yeah. to the headshot or something. Yeah, yeah. Like, just supply this headshot on the door. I, I, I'm just telling you. I, yeah, it I always here. takes longer. Yep. Yeah, so anticipate, anticipate more time than, than what you're being told. Yeah. Have Almost you ever had one from the day the permit left? You did. Okay. I don't want to touch. <sighs> yeah. Barely? The, there was, you mean that like took no. so, or the barely got open? Or no, that, that like, just said, this is when we're opening and it opened. And everything day. happened perfectly. Give me give me out of 16. Oh, man. No. Zero, no, right? zero. Never. There's zero. always something. And if so you're opening a gym, oh, yeah. take this. This yeah, is yeah, probably yeah. the <laughs> most valuable piece. Do if you, if you could start people. here and, and listen to the rest. Do not say when you're opening. <laughs> yeah. Do not ever say, we are opening on October 15th. Say, we're going to open in the, fall. in the fall of 2019, <laughs> in Q1 of 2020. And then as you get closer, make your communication get closer and closer. But yep. having made that mistake a lot, like these are the little mistakes that's like you lose members from what you say. You lose members yes. from what you do. Right. So it's like you don't have to make all these little mistakes. Just make sure that you say say the right thing through yep. the process. So PFMarketingSolutions.com <laughs> slash pre-sales. <laughs> we're going to link over to your course from Great. there. Oh, yeah. Great. Great. Help them through that process. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make my mistakes. No, it's going to your course. I know. That's what I'm saying. I, yeah. That's where we're going to send them. Uh, but, uh, you know, thank you so much for being on the show. Uh, I mean, I, I the numbers are, are nuts, right? And for you guys, it's normal. Like for your crew in the franchise world, it's right. normal. Like when I opened with like whatever, 80, 100 clients, I thought it was top of the world, right? It was a great job. Yeah, but, but if I think back, it came down to a couple things. It was I was always in it i was super animated excited i was calling everybody i was there was nothing i didn't know a damn thing about what i was going to do yeah. in that gym but i was calling everybody <laughs> so excited man i can't hey thank you for hey i saw you stop by his range time to come in and like and we were just like walking the studio and again it was dirt it was concrete floors mm-hmm. and, and you know and it was just i told the story to the team and they were like huh what are you talking about huh? <laughs> like what and, and the, you have one opportunity. You will. It's a lot easier to sell in a pre-sale than it is when you're opening. The numbers don't lie. Go all in. And if you're a gym that's open, which many of the, probably the majority of every person listening is is uh, is, is currently operating in a facility. Uh, Amanda's advice is to say set something in stone and then like focus for eight weeks, mm-hmm. six, Beautiful. ten weeks, twelve mm-hmm. weeks, and all in. Mm-hmm. And you know, maybe you roll back to founders rate. I don't know what the, the hook is because a lot of the a lot of the result is based on the offer. We we know that the, yeah, a lot of the yeah, weight, the is, leads, the amount of leads you're getting, the lead it's based traffic. on the offer. Like you know, you talked about founders rate is the big kicker for the grand opening with like a founders rate kind of like trial before. You know, if you're doing a re grand opening, maybe it's we're gonna roll it back to 2009 and we're gonna 
give you our rates from 2009 yeah, for, at, for, for one month. Even Please. at that, there's there's nothing crazy about any of those offers, right? Like you mentioned it's a, it's a low barrier or a reduced rate. Cool. They're it's a free it week. It's a free two week. Like it's there's nothing here that's but they're shiny build, ball. They're building on the hype of a new. That's the what. New, yeah, yeah. You're only new once. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then if you want to be new again, you you change the sign, and now you're X Y Z Fitness, <laughs> yeah. and we're in the same. It's the same bank account that your money's <laughs> going into. Yeah. So, but if you're like averaging net net eight, and you can double or triple that, like you're averaging net ten members a month, and then you go net twenty members a month for two or three months because of your focus on sales yeah. and marketing. Yeah. Well, then those twenty members, then that duplicates from referrals and everything else, and like an additional net twenty depending on your facility size over the period of eight weeks, it's worth it. If their length of stay is a Absolutely. year, year and a half or two years. That goes back to knowing your client. Knowing your client value. Yeah. Yep. So perfect guys that we'll end on that guys today. Amanda, thank you so much for coming. Thank you to Huge. Wh- whiskey <laughs> Wednesday. <laughs> I think just for anybody that's is tracking, I think we're four in and she's <laughs> one, one and a half, one and a, maybe a half, maybe a 10th, maybe a quarter. Oh. Uh, is, are we gonna like keep a tally? Like, are our, our, our people are gonna get at us? Like, how many we've had? For, oh, you guys had three and a half in that episode. You're yeah. gonna bump those numbers up. Those are amateur numbers. You know what they do is they look at the bottle at the beginning of the episode <laughs> and then they fast forward to the end. Oh, by the way, if you're if you're, if you're watching this on YouTube, if you're not on YouTube, go to Built to Grow Podcast on YouTube. You'll check out the episode. You can see what we're doing, making silly faces, and you'll watch the the bottle go down. <laughs> we Bottles. Drink water. But we that's right. Two, we had two in rotation. Yeah, two, two in different rotation. variations. Absolutely. Great job, guys. Hey, I appreciate you. You're part of it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. All right, guys. <laughs> Go until, team. Until next time, uh, keep changing lives and build something great. We'll talk to you on the next episode. Bye.